Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work session to order and thank you for being here this morning. But before we start, I would like for us to extend um, a moment of silence uh, as we honor our 41st uh, president, President George H. W. Bush. If we just extend a moment of si silence for him. <clears throat> Thank you all. We really appreciate and, um, President Bush's amazing contribution to this country. Uh, we'll get started this morning. Clerk, any public comment? Yes, we have two, Sonny. We have two comments this morning, um, Mr. Larry Pierce and Mr. John Tomansky. The Board of Commissioners welcome our citizens' comment. It is my goal to make these meetings run smoothly and efficiently and uh, in order for this government to be effective. In that same vein, I ask that you follow the rules as directed by the Chair. And I ask that everyone please assist me in keeping order in the room during the deliberative process. Please be mindful, uh, the Board of Commissioners respect your comments, and I ask uh, that you uh, be mindful of the three-minute time limit uh, as you come forward. Uh, Mr. Mr. Larry Pierce, please come forward. Please state your name and address. I thought I signed up under somebody, but uh, I don't mind breaking the ice. Larry Pierce? Mm -hmm. 2120 Van Sant Road, <coughs> Douglasville, Georgia. I'm sorry I missed you a couple weeks ago, but I was out getting x-rays and trying to feel better. Uh, maybe Madam Chair will consider that the City Council has five minutes. So I get to have two minutes longer when I go to their meetings that I started two months ago. But I'm trying to be a good Samaritan over there. I'm not sure what I am here. Well, what I want to tell you about is things that I've been trying to tell you about. And I know some of you think I'm adversarial. I'm really not. I'm really trying to bring you information that you can use in the judgment of the chair and council people that is supposed to be representative of the people in the best judgment of things to happen. Now, you know I fussed about the cooler being over there. Well, some of you don't know what a cooler is. It's a refrigerator. It's a refrigerator that the corner puts people in it have kind of deflated. Sometimes they're recently died. And you know who died a few weeks ago? A lady over on Highway 5 at the nursing home. 91 years old. And you know what they did to her? They went and got her and put her in the cooler. Now, a 91-year-old lady in a nursing home don't need to go anywhere except when the family calls and says for the funeral to come get her. So what is judgment and what is legal and what is illegal? I'm not sure where it's going. But I'll tell you one thing. You see this bag here? This bag represents a body bag. And let's just say <coughs> when things are in it, it's called pathogens. Pathogens leak out. When the bag gets moved and deflated, they come out. It takes a million grains of salt for one cup of salt. Now all these things happen, and you can't really stop it. It doesn't have cross-ventilation. They don't even keep a log over there. So whatever is going to happen to the cooler needs to happen because we don't need it. We didn't need it when it happened. 
And it only happened because she went to Las Vegas and found out if she had a someone in the office, she could get another notation to be certified. So all these things need to stop happening. Thousands of dollars, I calculated $4,600 being taken to the cooler. Larry Bussey said it wasn't going to cost us anything. Every time you go to the cooler, there's a $100 charge. Picking up people that you don't need to pick up, it's $175. They went to the nursing home, and the lady is 91 years old. And we paid him $175 to go check her out. Mr. She didn't break a leg. <coughs> okay. So it is time to open our eyes our ears <coughs> and let's start doing something right the first of the year thank you thank you so much mr pierce we appreciate your contribution and we will take your matter this matter under advisement <coughs> john tomaski please come forward for this your address and the subject matter this morning i think you said budget items please. john tomaski six thousand school department governor so uh, good morning to all good morning at the, the November 15th uh, session on the budget, Dr. Corbin presented uh, more information about his work on the tax improvement program. And uh, I'm going to have to throw about to catch whale because a senior staff member and a board member. Uh, were feeling a bit iry and got into the conversation about certain matters, which are quite relevant. Uh, now, the board has 11 <laughs> committees, eight of which meet on a regular basis. And out of those 11, do you think all the major areas would be covered? But there's no committee on economic development, particularly a committee that would vet proposals and try to make some determination of an equilibration between what we're giving up in lost tax revenue and what we may gain at some future point, <coughs> as well as embed in the original document conditional consequences for non-performance in regard to the pie in the sky. Now, if you are aware to have committees on many other subjects, how did such an important item escape <coughs> your attention? One has to wonder whether vetting was never in the program. There are no personnel at the Economic Development Authority capable of making the relevant determinations. And there is no committee here to vet. So a uh, rubber stamping becomes the order of the day. Now, a committee is in place now, is being formed now, which I call the Fig Leaf Committee. It's going to tend to housekeeping things, purely administrative things, but not the economic feasibility of the deals in terms of quid pro quo, not in terms of economic impacts. Stacy Abrams, the first time she visited the county last year, a little before the chairman arrived at her presentation, she mentioned that these jobs don't go to the people here. And in fact, I looked at data on interstate migration for 2017. The top five destinations of people leaving Georgia and the origins of the top five states people coming to Georgia. And that data is consistent with essentially people driven out and people coming in from other places. Now, a definitive statement would require more particular research, but since we find something which is consistent with that, it warrants examination. So there does need to be a committee that will look into economic matters, not simply administrative housekeeping details. 
Thank you. Thank you if so there much. Are any questions, <coughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Tomaski. Uh, we will take this matter on the advisement. We do have a committee. I'm going to step ahead of you. For 2019, I have a committee that will be focusing on tax uh, in, um, incentives and also economic development, and it will be uh, oversight <coughs> by our board of commissioners. So I've already made that assignment, and we can check a little later offline. So thank you so much for your contribution. Oh, well, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm understanding now that the committee is going to the committee's manager is going to be expanded to yes. include economic impacts yes. and economic yes. feasibility. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very good. Thank you. I didn't get to mention the comments made by the senior staff person and the commissioner, but I can email them. Thank you. <coughs> All right. We appreciate your contribution, Mr. Kinesky. Next, we have a presentation, uh, which is our WSA Pipe Farm Solutions and Funding. Uh, be presented by our Director of Burlington this morning, and I believe I saw our uh, Executive Director of uh, WSA, Jeremy yeah, Mouse. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, as you are all aware, we've uh, been involved in ongoing discussions about pipe farms and blight and activity and vacant subdivisions. Um, there's a lot of different uh, components that go into this, but one of the components that has proven to be a hurdle is um, the uh, an ordinance or policy by WSA that prohibits metal pipes um, being used on stormwater stuff. And so we've got an executive director, Bill Sherry, is going to come up and, and discuss it and any updates and possible solutions they come up with and, and go from there. Thank you, Mr. Worthington. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. So I'll give you just a brief history because I know this board has deliberated this matter before already, but I, I do think it's important to understand kind of the, the position from which the WSA board has come. So I'll spend just a couple minutes on a little bit of history and why we are where we are and then give you um, just a little bit of, of current information since last time this board has considered this. So, so you all know in, in 2008, 2009, there was a huge economic downturn in the economy. Most subdivisions that had begun ceased development and there were you know, different phases of development that, that occurred. Um, at that point, pr or just prior to that, um, these subdivisions that had begun had gone through preliminary plat, they had gotten construction plans approved, they had gotten um, done land disturbance permitting, they had, many of them had installed infrastructure that had been inspected by us for water, sewer, stormwater, been inspected by county for other other things. And, and when those um, subdivisions went idle, for lack of better terminology, um, they have basically sat there for a number of years and we're starting to see motion come back on those. During this time of idleness, our board had enacted several policies to um, provide betterment for the future homeowners. And, and again, I won't, I won't go too far on rabbit trails, but if the board asks, I'll be happy to to spin off on those. Um, our level of service with the county on stormwater management requires us to own and operate stormwater infrastructure in the public road right-of-way, not outside of the right-of-way. Those pipes and infrastructure are owned and maintained by private property owners. But we do regulate that infrastructure. And over time, what we have seen, mainly from you know, customers coming in with issues in the stormwater system, those pipes off the public road right-of-way that are owned and maintained by the private property owners continue to be an issue that they have to to deal with and most of them are what's called corrugated metal pipe cmp corrugated metal pipe that was allowed in the past and what we have done over the years is progressively gotten um, more restrictive on developments to future um, to aid and um, help future homeowners so they don't have to deal with that issue of um, metal pipe so in beginning in 2007 and progressively over the a few years up until 2013 our board enacted policies to prohibit corrugated metal pipe and require reinforced concrete pipe, which is a much more sturdy material as what's required under the roads, for instance, to um, provide a betterment for those homeowners. What has happened now is these developments, as they have come to you know, provide for um, current development, um, they don't meet the current requirements for reinforced concrete pipe in or outside of the public road right of way. Our requirements are they meet current standards if they had not uh, received a final plat basically they did not best into that infrastructure and so we were kind of at an impasse and our board had previously said you know they need to meet current standards to meet um, or to progress with development and that was one of the hurdles that mr. Worthington mentioned that has kind of been an impediment for some of these 
subdivisions. Um, our board, with much input from um, this board and other um, other stakeholders, has reconsidered that. And what our board has uh, decided is to um, help spur this economic development and to, for the Water and Sewer Authority, get assets producing revenue. We have water, sewer, and stormwater assets out there that are not being used, they're continuing to age, and they're not producing revenue. So our board has decided to participate in that, that solution. Um, about 50%, you know, the, the numbers are still kind of in the air, but about to the tune of 50% of the solution, mainly for us, we would recommend providing the pipe. And at the time of our last board meeting, for the development community to provide for the other half or the installation component of that. Um, that's where our board is in uh, solving that problem or helping to solve that problem. I was asked to come to, to this board today to um, give you guys that update and um, I guess answer any questions that might come out of that discussion. Again, that is the very high level discussion. Um, this has been months of you know, looking into and back and forth and resolving matters so I can go into many more details if, if the board desires but at this point I'll stop and see if there's any, any questions or comments or how how you'd like this discussion to proceed. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you Madam Chair. <coughs> and and um, Director Shellhoff, thank you for being here and, and giving that in that, that overview. And I'll I'll be brief. Um, as you guys know, and I'm talking to really my peers, I got involved in this um, because housing was something that we realized was important. Uh, we talk about economic development and we talk about small businesses, but I'll give you context to Chibitary and the Oz Pizza area. And people would come over here and they look at that Oz and said, okay, I want to move in. They look at those pipe cities in there and they're like, well, I don't think I want to move out here because y'all are not done yet. Not knowing there's eight, 900 homes back there, but still some of it is optics. This is something that I've sort of carried for the past couple of years, looking at this situation. Well, it's still sitting there. Um, north of Atlanta, those pipes are all gone. Uh, those pipes these are gone, right? We're sort of, we're the last to be built out and we're the last to recover in essence. And this is something that um, we realized that, okay, we have to address this. It's a pre-existing condition, right? It did not vest, right? So it's like, okay, well, it, it's holding back the digest. It's dragging on our growth rate, right? In other words, we thought we should have hit two, but we've got these. This should have been easily gobbled up, right? These are um, what I would call, they're very affordable lots. Um, they, they're great margins because you, they're, they're already in play. And so, you know, from my perspective, it was something worth sponsoring to try to address it. Um, we, we got into this. Um, I, I think it's important. I'm, I'm just giving this this context. Uh, when we start out with this, we, we realized that we're, we're talking about, you know, what, how do we handle this? Well, the Board of Commissioners s stepped up first, and, and I appreciate Madam <coughs> Chair getting behind this to say, look, we need to take responsibility with this. I remember how this conversation, these were public meetings, I mean, you know, public meetings. We had one at the Development Authority, um, in which we also weighed in as well. This was a, a public meeting. These three of them, James, is it three we've had? At least that I've been involved in? At least. Right. Yes, sir. We did. I know y'all had multiple staff, but three meetings publicly that I've been involved in uh, with developers, other stakeholders, <coughs> to let them know where the Board of Commissioners was trying to drive this. Right? It was that important because, again, address it. We do respect the fact that it was in the Water Sewer Authority's bandwidth, but it was because <coughs> we wanted to be a stakeholder. We wanted to come alongside to make this happen. At some point, um, I think two meetings ago, I took this to my public. I did it during one of my um, HOA boot camps. Some of um, the uh, board members did come, board of commissioners, and we asked the citizens, what do you think about us getting involved with this, dealing with this? No different than a foreclosed house that sits next to you that's empty, got three foot grass and sticks <coughs> running around and beavers and whatever the case may be. And it was a unanimous sentiment that says, okay, yes, we think it's appropriate. Right, so you guys know what I do. I ask first and say, okay, will y'all get behind this? We don't have to do anything, but we thought it was something worth advocating for. Right. We took it that far, but at some point we realized through our development services, um, Mark Teal and Jane Worthington and working with um, Director Shearhouse that, well, this is really their bailiwick. Right? In other words, we can't go only so far as to, um, we can't force it, we had to collaborate. <coughs> and so what you're hearing now, it's just a slight shift, it's, it, it, and I appreciate it, that WSA says, we're taking this up. Right, we're, we're we're taking this up, and this is where we want, this is why he's here. We're going to take that. We're going to take up to this up to a point of 50 percent. 
So let me just stop where we're right there. Let me, I'm sure I'll get to my questions now with that as background from our side. So uh, Director Shearhouse, let me make sure I understand what WSA is gonna say. Um, can you frame again, there's about nine communities, about what, 500 give or take? Not trying to be exact. James, can you help us? Sure. Yes. Uh, I believe there are eight communities left in, those, in our jurisdiction with a little over 400 lots. All right, eight and 400. And what would be the exact cost to buy and replace? I want to confirm what I, I, I think I know. So the, the, the county and through, through Mr. Worthington, they had done a, a very rough uh, estimate a few months ago, and I think this board might have heard a number of about 1.2 million to basically dig up that existing corrugated metal pipe and replace it with reinforced concrete pipe. We have since gone through a little bit more detail and looked at um, individual pipe segments and, and looked at that a little bit more specifically. We're coming up with an estimate of about $800,000. We are still vetting that number, so I would, I would say that's still a, a C-class estimate at this point, but um, we have kind of honed in on, on the number a little bit more specifically and are coming in around the 800,000 number. I would hope that that number would continue to go down as we look at that in more detail, but but I'd hope that is a good estimate at this point. I understand. All right, so there's an um, $800,000 bogey that you're after, um, give or take, plus or minus. I understand how estimations work. Um, the WSA is presenting to us that you discussed on your side <coughs> that we will buy and replace this infrastructure accordingly. Um, and um, to the tune of 50%. So that means you're going to front end the cost to purchase, and get in the land, do all the things necessary to make this public good, replace it, and then you're going to recoup it. What, 50%? Is that what I heard? Is that accurate? The, the mechanics of that, that that we discussed when we were discussing it with, you know, us participating with the development community at roughly 50 percent would be if the developers want us to take the lead, we could go in, replace the pipe, get permission from the developer first. There would have to be a release from the developer or the property owner to allow us onto their property, it's private property, to go in, replace that pipe, and then return that property back to the developer, the future homeowner in, in this case, so that the, the end result is clear that that is still private property, not, not in the public road right of way or not in public. Uh, domain. Uh, so we would go in with you know, agreement with the development community and then do the work and then we could get reimbursed that 50% over, you know, based on lots. If, you know, if the developer wanted to go in and reimburse their 50% up front, that'd be fine, but we could do a per lot assessment. So when the, the builder or the developer comes in to secure their building permit, they have to come to the Water and Sewer Authority to secure water and or sewer permit. They pay the fee. We have done that in times past where we add a, an additional fee to that for a reimbursement, they could do that in, in this case. So the mechanics of that would be, we could front the cost, the capital cost, and then get reimbursed the 50% on a per lot basis as that development builds out. Okay. Right, so, I'm, I mean, so that, again, that's WSA side. We're a separate board, so I just want to distinguish from my peers. So I'm going to just pause with that, because that's what you presented to your board. Um, I think there was a pause that you guys didn't decide on that because you wanted to present to us to see what we thought about this. This was a collaborative effort, so I mean, Madam Chair, I just want to, I'm going to yield back right now and allow them to weigh in and okay. we'll come back later. Okay. Commissioner Geiger? Yes, uh, Gail, give me an example <coughs> of off the road, right away, pipe. So, so a good example, if you can imagine a a, a road and you see the the catch basins on the side of the road they've got the openings in the curb and the water goes in there most of the time you have two houses if you were to turn to the right or to the left you'd see two <coughs> houses there is typically a pipe that exits the right of way and takes that water beyond those two houses and it discharges typically behind the rear building line of those two houses that pipe beyond the public road right of way that is on private property is private infrastructure. It is not in our level of service when we contracted for stormwater management with both the city and the county here for, for the county's purposes, the county contract. That level of service does not include our ownership or maintenance of the private infrastructure. It is limited to infrastructure within the public road right of way. I don't understand that why it's not part of WSA's authority to maintain because the water's got to go somewhere. Uh, if you don't address the water on this side of the private property, then why don't you have to pay to 
address the water crossing private property. It's like eminent, I mean, not eminent domain, but uh, some kind of easement. So that there are easements dedicated to the public good in these cases. So if you were to look at a plat on a subdivision like this, you would see what's called a general drainage easement. Those are dedicated to public good. Basically, they're noticed to the world and specifically to the future property owner that there is water and that water has a right to cross over that private property and typically those private pipes are delineated on the private plat or on the final plat to show that future homeowner that it is you know that it is there um, and, and the, the other simple answer is that is the level of service that was contracted between the board of commissioners and the water and sewer authority that's the that's the scope of our services so to speak uh, maybe we need to readdress that issue <laughs> Well, I had a subdivision, it's an older subdivision, and all the water, water runoff, rolls down the road into a, a, a drain that goes under the road and then onto private property, and the basements are flooding because of water that is water runoff. Rainwater runoff seems to me like you ought to address the whole issue, not just half of the issue, unless you can stop the water on on your side of the right way. I would not argue that part with you, but our job is to administer well, the contract. Water, rainwater runoff is rainwater runoff wherever it goes, because it's gonna go downhill <laughs> for sure. And if it crosses my property and my basement floods because of rainwater runoff from the street and other buildings in the vicinity, then it seems to me like it ought to be a WSA problem. And that's just my opinion about that. Because sure. I've come across <coughs> that in some of the open <coughs> subdivisions where uh, damage to their homes is being done by rainwater runoff. So, it's it's uh, the most complicated <coughs> program that any of us manage because of, because of that. It goes Public, private, public, private, public, private. As as water goes you know, across Let's the Let's put a retention pond. Catch it in a retention pond or something like that. But don't don't damage my property because you're not maintaining it. You're you're end of it. Uh, it's just um, I just wondered what you meant by uh, uh, off the road, uh, off the right of way pipe. So you're talking about something that channels rainwater. Storm rainwater. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. First of all, thanks, you know, for I know it's been a, a, an ongoing task, and and I know it's been kind of interesting as we, you know, took on this challenge to include the vice chair stated earlier. We're specifically talking about a few parts <coughs> of infrastructure that back in 2009 that kind of went through that recession and kind of got in trouble with the new policies that WSA um, introduced. And, and now these guys are affected. I just want to make sure, well, first of all, again, thank you for, for at least, you know, taking ownership of it as a WSA. And we all felt like, you know, somebody's got to take ownership of it because if not, it's going to, it's going to kind of create a problem for us with new growth and trying to get these developments developed because that's the holdup is who's in and who's out who's grandfather, who's not, you know, kind of my pipe, so my pipe company put the infrastructure in then, it was good. If they had built out, you would have been still dealing with that today. So uh, from the Board of Realtors and the West Georgia Board of Association and Builders <coughs> and so on, thank you for, for you guys at least jumping in. And, and, and we're kind of taking part ownership of this as well at the Board of Commissioners and Douglas County. You spoke about 50%. I'm really trying to get my arms, my head wrapped around the 50%. Okay, 50% of, of, is it that, he, who's paying the other 50? Who, who's taking ownership of the other 50% outside of the WSA? So, so our, our boards thought at, at the time of the last discussion, which was literally a, a, a week ago mm -hmm. today, was that you know, we could take a, take a part, but that the development community, okay, because, so they, the had it, because yeah. they hadn't you know, vested <coughs> rights into that, that infrastructure, okay. we assumed, or, we proposed at that time that you know we would take part of the burden and they would still because Understood. they have the burden today. Understood. They would keep part of that um, burden moving forward if they agreed to it. <coughs> got it. Got disagree. It. Right. That was our our proposal. But that's that, that, that 
at least this is a step in the right direction. I just want to make sure who are we speaking of, of that? Who, who is the other 50% kind of taking ownership of? And that's what I, I see now as the builder or whomever lot, whatever that is, he or she would kind of take ownership of that other 50%. And you've worked out an idea of how you would actually get that compensation, not all up front or down the road when you assess, I mean, not assess, when you put the fees associated with that particular sale of that lot, then that's when the, that 50% will kick in. That, that was that was our proposal. Again, we, we've not vetted that understood. with the development community or any of the affected property owners. Un un understood. Okay, I just, I, I get it now. I, I understand a little bit more about, about how this thing is kind of going now. So, um, and you mentioned about $1.2 million of, of dig up of the old pipe. So you guys are actually gonna go onto um, private property, put in the in today's infrastructure piping, if allowed, and move forward from that perspective. And and you will hold the, the expense until that property is either sold or moved or transitioned to whomever else, correct? Correct. And that person will, I mean the builder would then pick up that, you know, pay the additional fee to kind of make everybody whole. My yes, sir. Okay, okay. I'm gonna make sure. Okay, all right. Okay, we're good. Well, I have I've had many conversations with board members uh, to include vice chair and a few others to kind of get this thing kind of going in the right direction. Which I think this is at least a, a big step in the right direction because when we were not doing anything, as we can see, it, it 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 hurt not only the county but it hurt you guys as well. And and like Ann stated, this runoff it, it's kind of tricky. At, at what point do we, do WSA take ownership of the water? And what point do the owner of the property take ownership of the water? But if, you, if you're downstream, <laughs> the guys that are downstream are gonna get hit the hardest and the least served because it's their, I mean, it's, it's, it's their problem. Not the guys who are upstream who actually created the problem when they built the nice subdivision upstream. And not and understanding that that water is going to run downstream, or it's going to run somewhere downstream, west east. It's going to run downstream. So, 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 how are you guys addressing that concern to make sure that I know it's private property, but still, it's still runoff. So, you know, not to chase <laughs> yeah. too many things too far, but, but the first thing I would say in, in addressing stormwater management as a as a whole for the downstream property owner is development control. So as those developments come in and build out, part of our responsibility through our contract with the county is to control development to certain standards. So we require a new development to put in detention so that that water, as they build new houses, build new roads, there is additional runoff created, they have to put in detention ponds or other devices to retain or detain that water so that that downstream property owner basically sees the same amount of water coming across his or her property as they would had that property been undeveloped. Um, there's also requirements for water quality and, and a lot of other things. I won't you know, be right here unless you just, I mean, we, can, we can go there if you want to, but it's a, a, probably a topic for another day. I think one of the other you know, common misconceptions, first about stormwater, second about WSA's management of stormwater is the water is public water. It's not anybody's water. It's not our water at any point. It's not the county's water. It's not that homeowner's water. Um, stormwater management is about managing and um, really for, for us and what our contract con con um, considers is our um, management of the infrastructure. So we're not managing water per se. We're more managing the infrastructure and in the case of our level of service it is the infrastructure within the public road right away. So the pipes under the road, the cash basins, ditches, you know, roadside ditches to some degree. Um, it, it is by far the most complicated program that we manage um, and it's one that we spend a lot of time in public education for that reason. We, we hold at least an annual stormwater seminar for that reason to educate the public on what stormwater is, how we manage it, what roles we have, what roles the private property owners have. Um, it's no different than if you have a, a creek in the back of your property or along you know, the frontage of your property. Um, that's a, a misconception that you know, we're going to maintain the ditches. That's not, that's right. not what we do. If, you know, if a tree falls in the creek on you know, somebody's right. back lot, that's not part of the management. So, so it, it's very confusing because stormwater goes from private through yes. a public pipe and then yes. it's private again. And, um, and I think a lot of it's education to, to the earlier point. 
if something else is to be considered, that is a much bigger discussion. Realize there is a lot of private infrastructure, stormwater infrastructure out there, and that would that would require much consideration to to go there. Not that we can't go there as you know a partnership, but that would drastically change the the stormwater management program that that we have with the county at this point. But just. And, and I know we've had conversations about this on many occasions, especially on the north side or in District 1. Um, the concern is we allow the developer to build upstream, knowing once you guys approve that that's okay, you know, knowing that the water's going to go some, some way. The question is, we don't know exactly where, but whether it's go private, public, private, but it's going to go somewhere, but then the guys downstream get kind of caught in the middle of this is not the norm with what you said earlier that when you build upstream, however, and the water starts to traveling, do, do the downstream guy get the same amount of water that he or she was getting before? Probably not. Well, yeah. To, to, yeah. to be clear, they, yeah. in, in technical terms, okay. they get the same rate of water that they would okay. before. There is additional stormwater generated any time development occurs, whether Correct. it's rooftop, yes. road, or yes. Um, yes. anything else. What the development control regulations would require is that the rate of flow going across somebody's property is no more than had that property never been developed. And, and it goes back to you know, basically natural woods. The other thing that we require is what's called a downstream analysis. So we require that development as they engineer their controls to analyze every property line, every road crossing to a point where the development is 10% of the overall basin. So if you can imagine, you know, kind of a, uh -huh. a water shed that looks like this, when that development equals 10%, they have to go down uh -huh. to that point, analyze these different points so that, you know, if there is a potential issue that that gets identified in the design stage, not in, you know, when the customer sees it after the fact but, but just to be clear that there is more water generated when development occurs the regulations are there to minimize the impact there's a term called no adverse impact and that's that's the development control that um, or the scheme that we're we have to go now, I, I know I, I mean there's still a lot more work that I'm saying that needs to be done about how we allow the build out and how we try and manage the flow uh, and, and, and that's not only saying work for, for us but it worked for you guys as well that we got to do a holistic look downstream versus it's okay to build on our end and we go yes developer build 150 lots and when the rooftops and, and everything else get that impervious surfaces and so on and so forth <coughs> it's going to be obvious the water's going to go somewhere we all know that the question is where and how do we not leave the guy on the uh, i guess on the back end kind of stuck with like we can't come on private property. But we've had this conversation, but this is a whole nother conversation. But back to this here, so I'm good. So I'm gonna leave it at that. So I yield that. But thank you. But thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Any other comment, Commissioner Mulk here? Yes. Uh, good uh, good discussion. <coughs> Basically two very clear cut topics. And what we were initially going to address was the uh, uh, proverbial the PVC farms. Uh, doing something in partnership with uh, the county and the WSA and, and uh, the development uh, uh, constituency in the county uh, in helping to kickstart our housing recovery in the mm -hmm. county. So I want to thank uh, Director Worthington and, and you, uh, Gil, the WSA, for coming to, I think, a very uh, appropriate, lucid, simple, mm -hmm. hope remain simple. Uh, the solution to the to these uh, 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 what you call dormant or uh, uh, suspended uh, developments. So I'm really heartened by that. The other, a lot of the other discussion though has gone to something that's uh, not really on the agenda, but I think very very important because I think every every commissioner up here has dealt with property owners mm -hmm. who have a pot, have a hole in their in their side yard, and it's just it's a steel pipe that over time over 10, 20, 30 years is rusted out. And the fact that that property owner is handling water for 40 or 50 other houses, mm -hmm. and it's it's not uh, it's not uh, technically WSA or, or the county stormwater infrastructure is the private property owners. So I'm I'm very heartened uh, by your comment that it's it's going to take you're going to entertain uh, some further discussion in that direction. It's going to take some partnership between the county and the, and the WSA 
uh, to see how we delineate uh, stormwater infrastructure responsibilities and uh, it's, it's good to hear. So that, that's going to be a topic I think will be a front burner for uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much Commissioner Mulcair. Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, okay, so bring it back full circle. Um, today's topic and the agenda just before us is um, you're looking for feedback from us, I mean the Board of Commissioners, if any, uh, regarding your proposed course of action regarding uh, somewhere between 800 and a million to, to buy, one of the words you use with me, buy and replace pipes on private property, right? Um, and you will recapture half of that through some type of either developer fee or lot assessment. Just like, you know, I'm not technical, but something to that course of action. Um, which, I, again, as a standalone, I think that's great. But from my position, it falls just a little bit short. And I want to tell you why. And maybe to Mr. Tomaski's point a bit earlier, one of our citizens, we do a lot of economic development incentives for large developers. Right? We've got developers down there, down on the, the west side, and we'll, we'll spot private property and put land and infrastructure on it, you know. Uh, whether we own something or don't own something, we, we, we do that as a, as a precedent. But I, I think, um, if you think about this particular situation, these 400 lots represents small builders, right? It, it's small developers. The national builders are going to do what the national builders do. They're going to come in here and go, roll. they're going to brought, they plop down, and they go. But what happened is, if you remember, Douglas County was built on small guys, right? They were built on the small developers, the, the small builders and stuff. And a lot of them went, you know, the way of how they went because obviously wholesale bankers were pulling up money. We're not going to fund you no more. They didn't have the financing. And so they pretty much dried out. And this is the last remaining area in which they could pretty much have a shot of, of some degree of, of recovery, right? And because they can buy it cheap, it's already down to play. And so um, in, in my mind, I, I think that perhaps the Board of Commissioners should come alongside and pick up the other half because if we can spot the big guys and let them incent in and drop bonds on them, surely we can cover this. Um, and so if I'm talking about, if I hear what you're saying, if it's going to cost 800000 then okay, you're going to coop half of that at what, 400000 That means the Board of Commissioners will pick up 400000 to offset that. Is that good enough math? Somewhere between four hundred and six hundred for the sake of you and James's numbers. All right, um, so to my peers, the Board of Commissioners come along through some type of intergovernmental agreement, put up four to six hundred thousand dollars. Now, of course, I look for that over time. You know, I'm a structured guy. So, you know, maybe we make a, uh, an annual payment of maybe, you know, I don't know, whatever the, the difference, maybe five, five years or so. But, but something that gives the developers, um, like, look, we really want you to stay here. We don't want you to walk away. We want to give you a shot. This is a one-time thing, one time only. Um, our job is not to try to deal with the practices of the past or even try to um, modulate going forward. It's just a one-time fix. Cut this, you know, again, pre-existing condition out. Um, take it off the shelf. Get our digest back rolling regarding this. Get off the drag in the local neighborhoods that surround it and move forward. So it looks like you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is the WSA has paused to allow the Board of Commissioners to consider coming alongside and picking up the other half. In other words, it's collaboration. In other words, they were going to do their part, but pass it through to developers. I'm like, well, you back where you started from. You're still passing it back through. Mm -hmm. I'll use your word, cost shifting. I mean, cost shifting. It's cost shifting. So I'm going to pause there because I don't want to overcomplicate this. It's a math problem. The question is not could we do this, but should we do it, and would we be willing to put up the other half like they are uh, to move this forward? And so um, if we did agree through some type of consensus, then over the next two weeks, our lawyers and everybody would get together and we would have to come out with some type of joint agreement two weeks out um, to sort of solve this. This is nothing we can just, you know, the, the agreement can't be cut until we agree. So I yield. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Mulcahy. Yeah. To, in, in, in response to the Vice Chairman Robinson, circle back, um, the, uh, the half cost sharing. Uh, with, with the county bearing that. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, diametrically opposed to that, but I would like to see some consideration or study. Realize a lot of these properties acquired by the owners now uh, have acquired them at pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, 
largely, hugely discounted uh, acquisition of property. So would it be appropriate for us to completely compensate uh, for the other half of uh, the stormwater uh, infrastructure? I'm, I'm open-minded about it. I'm open-minded, but we have to, we have to consider what uh, uh, the, the total uh, financial picture for the developer, because they have got quite a few good deals in, in the community. So I yield back. Commissioner Guido. And Thank we you. might want just to um, extend on that, we might want to share that half with the developer in the county. Uh, because uh, they do have uh, a stake in it, but they've, uh, like you said, they've gotten a good deal on most of the properties that they're going to build out. So that's something that we can discuss, but uh, I'm open minded on that. Okay. Yep. You're open minded. Okay. All right. Thank you uh, so much, um, Thank Director you. Surehouse, and uh, we will we'll take our time and just chat about it a little later. But I, uh, again, um, as I mentioned earlier, I serve on both boards, so it's hard for me. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle, so I'm neutral here. But of course, would like to see this properties uh, these properties move forward. We are in the position of competing. That's why um, I talked about the, 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 the potential of cost shifting. We're just really putting the developer right back in the same spot. I want to make sure that we're in a position to compete with other counties, not just Douglas County. So this is just a, a, a segue to say, hey, we're ready. We're in the game. We play to win. And uh, I would like to, if, if this board would consider uh, bearing that 50% cost so we can move forward. I believe, Gil, you said uh, 700000 was the other day, but I guess it ticked up a little bit to eight hundred <laughs> just within... Yeah. That's the ballpark we're in yeah. right now. I'm, publicly, I'll say $800,000, but I'd like to see it closer to seven hundred. But yes. we're, we're still honing in on the estimates. Okay, and, it, and, it, and also, let me just that's the total, that, just be clear, that's the, our total cost estimate at this point, not right. 50%. Yeah. And just clarity for the Board of Commissioners, WSA will buy the pipes as we agreed upon. We will buy and install. So we'll do the heavy lifting, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's pending approval by the developer or the underlying property. Yes, they would have to agree to it. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you for your presentation. Uh, any any other comment, Director Worthington? Thank you all for your um, thank you all. massive body of work on this project. It's, I know it's been a lot of uh, work. We've been meeting with our uh, developers and also just uh, stakeholders. Period. Uh, WSA, I appreciate what we've done i'm telling you there was uh, quite a moment there for all of us the board members to make a decision but i pre really appreciate the wsa has done in our board so thank you so much thank you and i appreciate this board of commissioners as well thank you we'll move on to the next item our next item is presentation of the, on the lee road small area study and the lee road extension study director worthington and how, how are you doing Manager Ronald Ross. Oh, no, I don't know the tanks, but I'll do it. So is this, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, is this phase one or two? Which phase Which of phase road is this? It's both of them. Yes, ma'am. So just a real, 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 real uh, uh, quick recap. So last September, uh, the county employed uh, Clark Patterson and Lee to begin a small area study uh, at 92 and Lee Road. And then um, last spring, that study was expanded to the Lee Road corridor. And so we have we have a, a timeline of which staff would be receiving this report at the end of this week. But we were requested to come here today uh, for the work session to do a, a presentation and an update. And so I brought uh, Rebecca Kiefer in, and we're going to uh, go through the, the, the update for you right now. <coughs> I think this thing right here changed. So this is this is everything from you know, Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. So what Commissioner Guy was asking. So this is everything from I twenty all the way to Beaumont. That's correct. It's the corridor and the all the way to Beaumont all the way to Chapel Hill. Chapel, Chapel, all the way to Chapel Hill. So it's about everything. Okay. So it's two and three. Two and three. Right. Yes. Widening yes. and expansion. Right. To be clear, the um, the road widening, uh, this encompasses the portion of the road that's going to be widened um, as far as land uses are concerned, but not necessarily how the cross section looks since that's already been determined through um, yeah, that process. Um, so like Brown said, uh, I'm Rebecca Kiefer, uh, and I'm happy to be here to present an update on both the small area plan and the uh, 
the uh, entire Lee Road corridor um, land use plan mm -hmm. and everything that comes with that. Thank you. Um, so I'll briefly uh, update you where you know what we've come from to date and um, outline each plan uh, very quickly, and then go into the, the future schedule and, and see if there are any alterations you'd like to date. Um, so we kicked off uh, at the September Saturdays event in 2017 at the end of September and since then have had um, a plethora of public input opportunities. There, there have been ongoing items like uh, the Facebook page and an email blast um, as well as a number of events that we, public events that we attended and um, board of commissioner events. Um, as well as the development roundtable where we've uh, gotten more in-depth input and, and feedback on different items. From all of that input, as well as an analysis of all your uh, previous plans, um, we've um, been able to reflect on uh, the input and those plans and move forward with the uh, planning documents that we've got here. Um, in general, uh, we identified some priority priorities, needs, um, and opportunities uh, that were reflected in all of those plans as well as the public input, some of that being you know, the need for space for family-oriented activities, uh, walking trails, and things like that. So we uh, started with uh, several different concept plans and through the roundtable process have narrowed that down, got some feedback on uh, the development patterns and the land uses. Um, and we've also looked at your housing study and the need for uh, an additional potentially 900 uh, units in the county uh, over the next several years, uh, as well as your um, economic <coughs> development strategy and some of those niche sectors that you're targeting. So with that, we'll go into a detail of the small area plan. To orient you, this is uh, the Lee Road extension. So you've got a racetrack here, the Walgreens and the tractor supply out to Beaumar Road, where that would continue um, as one corridor. And so this was, uh, I think, originally presented at this year's uh, uh, September Saturdays event. And so what I'll do, I've got a red box to go through the different land uses and um, briefly explain the different components of this plan. So starting up at the top, we've got um, a good bit of residential lots, um, larger lots toward uh, the top of the plan um, to buffer from other single family residential in this, uh, fairly intensive uh, mixed-use development and so you can see different residential lots throughout uh, that mirror kind of the existing development that's there. Here you've got a senior housing component and um, this is along uh, Highway 92 up here. Uh, the green being mixed use and the orange uh, kind of restaurant pub uses to um, help accommodate the senior housing. Um, some of that multifamily that the housing study had uh, identified meeting. Uh, I think in this plan we identified uh, about half of that being located here. Um, as well as in the yellow a hotel, um, some mixed use. Uh, potentially a school throughout the process we had identified uh, maybe the need for some additional uh, school space. Um, so we've got that here adjacent to the existing, some of the existing development and again down here by the Lee Road extension, uh, a performing arts center with, um, and then these would be, um, let's see, here you've got kind of a, a natural area and, and this central axis um, would also serve as a detention pond for the entire development um, that would also be an amenity, um, a portion of it natural and a portion of it more of a formal access up, uh, leading up to uh, a future county facility um, as uh, we've been told that you guys are kind of bursting at the seams in, in this uh, facility so it's uh, we've provided some space for uh, some additional county uh, space and as you get down here it uh, moves into a floodplain and um, so a lot of the there's not a lot of development that could be accommodated here so we provided for um, one their stream buffers and things to, to deal with uh, but provided for some um, maybe multi-purpose uh, athletic fields that aren't programmed or anything just kind of pick up um, and walking <coughs> trails again the bridge and, and some more and then some of this housing down here and just to highlight some of the 
this is uh, the Lee Road extension and how you would access the site from Lee Road um, based on the feedback from the development roundtable. We made sure to um, provide very good access management along Lee Road so that there, um, we can maintain the, the free flow of traffic along Lee Road uh, without a bunch of curb cuts leading to the development. So that would be a roundabout or traffic circle. Again, that access leading up in the blue to the uh, county facility. And then some of that, uh, the, the different natural areas, uh, including the water, um, where that's a very functional detention pond where people can actually interact with the water. Now, moving into the quarter land use plan, um, one thing that we heard throughout the process is, um, you know, part of uh, the intention of adding the quarter plan was with all the changes that are happening to Lee Road, there are going to be uh, some development pressures and wanting to create some certainty. Um, not only for developers, but for the community, for the Board of Commissioners, and a plan for how to um, address those development pressures as the road is transformed. Um, so what we've done, um, this is the, the, these are the existing land uses, and we've also heard um, the idea is also not to um, just create a commercial port or that there would be residential connecting them. And we've still got some refining to do on um, the proposed to make it um, kind of comply with some of the character areas. Um, but then this would be the, the proposed with um, some of the more development um, toward the east end and then getting more residential and maintaining some of that residential character as you get to the west. So the first character area um, along Interstate 20 would be the Sweetwater character area. We've got the existing down here, proposed here. Again, still some more tweaks in, in some of these with my team about what the actual coloring is. But the character that we're seeking for uh, this um, kind of commercial node would be mid-level, um, your right along the interstate, but you also have some challenges given some of the right-of-way that's been taken um, for the Interstate 20 interchange. We're going to preserve those existing family uh, homes, uh, create, create some safe routes to school with the schools being in the area, and also have some single family attached um, as the, the corridor redevelops. Next one, Factory Shoals. Um, we've got some mixed use there uh, adjacent to the corridor, um, so addition, additional park space. And again, a lot of single family attached along the corridor to help buffer from the single family residential of that uh, expanded um, cross section, um, but then also to, to um, prevent it from being fully commercial through the length of the corridor. Um, this would be the Lee Road character area. So again, um, that Lee Road plan, um, we would recommend zoning and, and land use to be um, in the plan, in the more detailed plan that we've done for you. Um, and then maybe some multifamily buffering, uh, some of the other single family uses uh, as you read out from that. Crooked, Crooked Creek character area, this would, um, would need to stay mostly yellow because as we're getting toward the western side, of the corridor um, we're wanting to again maintain that residential character um, but maybe a, a little bit more dense, dense development with some more of that single family attached some large lot residential um, and tapering away from the more intense development to the east and then that anawiki uh, character area I, this one is is very um, uh, you know preserve and uh, protect the existing sam single family homes there um, there's you know, of course, the creek that we want to protect um, and not do a lot of additional development. So this is a really about a preservation uh, character area. We promote some conservation subdivisions there as well. Um, and then lastly, that leads me to the Chapel Hill character area where it's a, it's a gateway intersection to the Lee Road Corridor. Um, you know, we'll be uh, recommending some changes to uh, the, the Beaumar Corridor that would be um, would transform into the Lee Road Corridor for that east to west connector. Um, but again, preserve it uh, as more of a residential character area. And so with that, we've got the upcoming schedule. It's a little bit adjusted from our original one um, to be able to come and, and make sure we're kind of headed on the right path mm -hmm. and do, do a touch point with you. Um, what I would say from this schedule, we, hit, we did maintain the January 7th and 8th Board of Commission adoption and we're happy to push that um, what this schedule does do is the draft is public, posted publicly on the 17th um, before it goes uh, on the agenda, I think on the 28th, if you'd like to extend the amount of time that the public has 
the ability to comment on, we're happy to come to the February meeting, um, whatever is the will of the board. Okay. Any questions from the board? Vice Chairman Robinson? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll, I'll, I'll Thank you so much. defer to timeline. You can address timeline. Um, and, 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 and again, one of these things that it's important um, um, that with this existing Board of Commissioners, this is something that at least all of us have worked together over the past, what, eight, eight years in some cases, ten in the other. And th this is something that we want to make sure we tie up right and that there's proper feedback and insight and sort of like that last will, like what do you really think about this? So I, and the reason I, I was pushing on the timeline was to ensure that Commissioner Volker had his, his due to weigh in on this because again, um, our, I mean, he and I touch and then obviously it goes on to District 4 as well eventually it'll go all the way around. And it may loop all the way around back to District 1, but uh, this is a collective effort. So all of our, our, our opinions matter on this one. Uh, that being said, uh, when I heard um, east to west, and I want to make sure that it doesn't get lost that there is an LCI that comes down the middle of this. Is that correct? That's correct. That right. is. Um, which, which means what? Livable Centers, Centers Initiative? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So that live, work, play type concept? And, 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 and I appreciate your challenge that you have because we're not necessarily doing this out west where you have raw land and we can, you can really nurture trying to redevelop something that, that's already existing, right? And, and well, it has pockets. District 2, for the most part, with it, it's built out. And so I appreciate what you're trying to do, make it work with the hand that's being dealt. Because I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, now how are you going to maintain this and not let it just become another commercial corridor where it's just transactional? Mm -hmm. The whole premise is to make it relational, make, make, it, make it feel Douglas County, make it feel familial, make it feel family. And so I, I'm only putting that for the record that as it, it relates to character areas, it, it's got to be both. It doesn't have to be either or as it relates to, you know, commercial and non-commercial. But, um, it, you know, you've you got to blend this. I think you're on the right track. I'm hearing the right character areas. I thank you for hearing us last time, making sure that gets in there. Uh, but it, it's just not about the transaction. Yes, we want economic development. Yes, we want small businesses. But we don't want to mow over the trees. We don't want to mow over the, the um, you know, compromise the current residents that are there. We want a, a blend and upgrade. And so I just wanted to make that comment. I appreciate what I hear. Um, I'm just going to yield from that right now. I'm okay, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I really, uh, I, I really like the direction of the, of the planning, and uh, um, I'm not going to uh, suggest anything in terms of timeline, except perhaps we could have more, a little more period of, of public input perhaps but uh, y'all would adopt uh, in February but that would be a, 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 at y'all's y'all's discretion uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner elect Garthen and I have, have driven around a little bit and, and looked at some areas and we'll continue to do that before she takes uh, full reins on January 1st and uh, but it's suffice, suffice to say I like I like the direction uh, that this is going uh, <coughs> it, it bodes well for Douglas County over the next several decades to have a plan like this and something that will encourage uh, you know, quality development and the right, having the right developers come in to do the right thing uh, for Douglas County citizens. So, and thank I, you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lowe here, that was great. Uh, your comment was wonderful. In fact, I would like to see some extensions as well placed on the uh, timeline, well, extension placed on for the public. To view it a little longer, I believe maybe. Uh, what is what was your date? Your um, the date of the original adoption was January seventh and eighth, and yeah. February fourth and fifth are your first. It's your first meeting mm -hmm. in February. Yeah, it's holiday season, so everybody's just mm -hmm. kind of off the radar a little right. bit. So if we yep. could extend it, that would just really work. Okay, thank you so much. Any other comments from board of commissioners? Great presentation. Uh, excited about what's yeah. coming down the pipe. Yes, yeah. thank you. Decades or so. So thank you. Our development uh, executive director, Chris Popper, I think you have a comment to add. Thank you. Yeah. Just wanted to, for the um, welcome. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> and your name? Chris Popper, uh, executive director of the development Authority. I just wanted to point out um, part of the part of the length in time that why it's taking this long. Um, we have been working with the family that owns the core of this property for about two years now, trying to um, get them to allow us to have control of the property. 
And so uh, we finally have their signatures on an option agreement and uh, are sending checks off this week to thus we will then have control of the property for a two year time frame. So that gives us two years to go through taking the, the plan that's, that, that will be adopted, um, going through that process, doing the due diligence on the property, coming up with a development strategy uh, for the property, looking at all the different components um, for, for developing and making it come to fruition. As you recall, one of the key components of the uh, SPLOS that was approved in 2016 was transportation related for economic development, and that included um, right-of-way acquisition for the lead road extension. So all of these things are layering together. Um, so the, these were the components that led us to come to the fact of doing this particular study, doing the corridor study, uh, but <coughs> part of that length in time really has been trying to get the property under control. So we have control for two years starting <coughs> this month um, uh, of 136 acres, which will be at the core of this. Um, I think this total plan is 200 or so. So there's a couple of other outliers on it that we don't have control over right now. But I would say the core of it pretty much from fronting Highway 92 back to the bulk of this right here, we do have control of. So, um, so we'll be working closely. We have been working closely with staff, with CPL, um, in, in kind of pulling this all together. Uh, but we definitely will want to want to make sure that some of the things that were pointed out in there that we're talking to the individual organizations. Do we want to have some type of county administration there? You know, looking at some things that we don't have. But a big component of it is the full-on development of the Highway 92 corridor. Um, and this kind of being the core of that, going back to our economic development strategy of recruitment of retail, um, office, professional services, and technology. So all these things are layering together um, to, to, to make this thing come to fruition. So we want to make sure the public knows this is not intended to be a plan that sits on the shelf. This is a plan that we will have to enact because we actually have money on the table um, in order to, to make this come to fruition. So just wanted to add to that. Thank, hey, you. thank you so much, um, Executive Director Conway. Any questions from the board for that? Yeah. Exactly. You have a comment? Yeah, just very Mr. quickly. Robinson? Yeah, just very crisp to, to that point. And I appreciate that update, um, uh, our participation <coughs> in this corridor. So, again, it looks like it is moving beyond just um, a pretty picture, uh, but we're actually in a position to sort of move some things forward. Uh, stakeholders, I heard her mention schools and different things, which are like, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll. She said it, but then you came behind, with, which gives me comfort that I'm sure you'll be talking to other stakeholders that are in the county, like the school, because it, it has some assumptions in it. Um, yeah. How does that work? Yeah, a, a lot of the things that Rebecca did mention were from conversations that we've already had. Okay. So we were kind of intently focused on doing those things, and even the comment we made about um, the character area preserving, right. we wanted to ensure that we were instituting green space. Yeah. Um, into the development, the natural water features and things like that, but also the end users as well. So we've, we've, we've been having these discussions with yeah. individual um, organizations, yeah. um, and then we'll just now, now that we have control, and once we have a plan, we can say, here's our vision, let's, not, let's start talking about strategy. Yeah, so, it, it, so I'll, I'll close it. So it sounds like, you know, I hear all those different elements, um, you know, administration, you know, whatever you call it, amphitheater, um, at, uh, other mixed use, you said, so it's sort of like, like it, it feels like a town center, for the sake of that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I, I, I'm just putting that as a pause, does this something, in, in Commissioner Rich, not to, to label this topic, mm -hmm. TAD, is this, would this work for a TAD or some type of, or, or the LCI is enough for this? Is there something legislative that needs to be done to make this a better place to, 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 to accelerate um, this area? I'm only asking not to belabor. Yeah, no, no. Um, unfortunately, a TAD would not be eligible on this this core property. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe other parts of it. Okay. Um, but on this core property, no, because it's all green space. Not as a strategic map. Okay. Are you not sure? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. All right. all right. Thank you so much, uh, Executive Director. This conference is very good information. Thank you, Rebecca, for, this, for the presentation. Thank you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Manager Roberts. We'll move forward. Approval of the minutes of tomorrow. Board of Commissioners, please take an uh, opportunity to look at those minutes as we shall approve accordingly tomorrow. 
Well, we have a public hearing scheduled tomorrow, which is tab five, and uh, that public hearing is regarding our 2019 budget mm -hmm. and be led by uh, Director Holman. Did you have anything you wanted to briefly share with us? Just to make sure that uh, the county administrator sent out the uh, email on Friday showing you the presentation that will be um, given tomorrow, as well as the commissioner comments. Okay. Everybody should have that. Yes, on the packet as well. Yeah, it's in okay. The Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Business items. Okay. Um, yes, on the um, um, the item we're talking about budget. Uh, Seven five. Mm -hmm. Seven five. I, I don't know. This may or may not be the timing, uh, but is there any time given that uh, the tax commissioner? Because I, I think he's really tied up with some other things that he's doing, and I, I want to make sure that we clearly get that portion uh, on his behalf of this small change of. Um, of uh, some BIRs and some things like that that I recommended that, you know, we've had some conversations about though. But I think he's here to at least take about two minutes so we'll know. So I don't know if he'll make it tomorrow because he's got some kind of project that's going on over there that he don't have he don't have that much time to speak on it. But I'm, I think he's here if you don't mind. Yeah, I would love to take about a minute or two to tax commissioner. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought he was here. <clears throat> uh, I saw him. But, but the but the ideal is that um, we make some BIR adjustments. I've talked to Mark and a few others, and, and Kelly and I have had some conversations as well. I just wanted to make sure that you know we don't miss the moment and miss the mark. Um, I will still his thunder about him trying to push more than the 96 percent, even though that's what we made our mark. But what he's actually doing is better than, and, you know, and all the work that he's going to do to make sure that to reassure us that in this adjustment it would be in his favor and help him obtain those types of uh, uh, things. So I, I'll, I'll, I don't want to, you know, you, you tell me what you got here and, and help me out, you know, what you Well, basically, I, I, you, I sat yes. down and spoke to a lot of people about my budget and I understand that the BIRs were cut out. Um, and I, staff is great. We sit down, we talk, and I, sometimes I think they don't understand that constitutional officers aren't department heads. And they kind of treat us like department heads, so they do our budgets like department heads. But actually, I'm constitutionally bound to do certain things. I have no choice. You have you have no choice because you, you're just like me. You're constitutionally bound to do certain things. Uh, last year, we give given the board of commissioners approximately about 43 million towards your budget. That's what my department. We, that's what we wrote checks to you for. Approximately about $43 million that we give to the county. Uh, this November alone, we had, in one week, we had 578 people come through the property tax office all week paying their property tax bill. That's a record. And that's, that's all week that they came through. We, we do about, 8,000 transactions, 1,100 a day now, all just on the tag side. Uh, that's an increase. We have new people moving into the county. It's an increase in the influx of people moving in. Uh, we got new responsibilities with the drive systems coming in. We have to send those people to classes. We're actually a training site for the state. And one of the reasons we wanted to become a training site for the state is not only it gives us more visibility with the state, but we also recognize that we're trying to get uh, a driver services in the county. I believe that helps us uh, also in getting that done. But you also have to remember that my budget is offset by fees we collect for the county. And with those fees, they're supposed to actually go to the tax commissioner's office. So I would hope that you would just look at my, the BIRs I asked for and reconsider. And uh, we had this discussion actually when I came up before you a little while ago <coughs> when Mrs. Geiger said, well, why didn't you ask for that in your budget? And I had to tell her I did, but you cut my budget. So this year I decided to come up before you to let you know I am asking for it, Mrs. Geiger, and the rest of you, not just picking on you. But you need to know that I do ask for it in my budget, but it seems to get cut. So I have to come before you to say, hey, 
I am asking for it in my budget. I truly need it. I'm not asking for anything I don't need. What I don't use, you get back. But you, and you, you can remember when I asked you for two people and you guys gave me one. I haven't come back and asked for that second person because we've been getting by with one. Actually, if I had that second person, I know for a fact I could increase your revenue. I know that number. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to sit down and tell you that number that I know I can increase it with. Last time I was before you, I said I had a number that we went out and collected. We found revenue that we haven't collected. We actually sent out a bill for $17.5 million for that revenue that we found. Uh, now, don't take that as $17 million that's going to come, half that's going to come to you because you got a 60%, we only tax 60% of that. And then part of that goes to the school board. No. So when you hear those numbers, I always remember it's not right. $17 million that's going to go to you, but that also is an increased revenue that does go to you. Now, that's really not our job to go out and find these businesses. We do it in conjunction with the assessor's office because I know they're strapped too. We're out in the field, so we might as well do it. Uh, and we catch them now before they go out of business. When they're going out of business and they stick that going out of business sign up, we're out there right away. We're out there making sure the taxes are paid, making sure we collected our taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's additional time and stuff spent. So that's all I really have is that when you <coughs> consider this, we'd appreciate it. It's needed. I think everything we do increases revenue to the county and that we would like to continue to do that job. We also have hours that we want to extend hours. That's one of the things that our citizens are asking for that we extend more hours that they can get home and get those tags. And I think it's something that we need to do. I checked other counties. Some counties are open to six. I got one, two of them, they're open to seven o'clock at night. I don't think we want to do that, but uh, these are the things that we need to do. We're growing county, and just from my estimates alone, by the time we do this next census, my estimates will be at 150,000, maybe 160,000 folks in Douglas County. Uh, I see it every day. I stand out front. I talk to people here who are moving here every day. So please consider it. That's what I'm here for. And if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I've had it conversation with Mr. Bernard. He understands where we're going on this. Um, so, any questions? Well, I, I'll just close in saying uh, and thank you for, for, I know you got a, a big project going on over at the, uh, the, the at your office, so thank you for at least taking a couple of minutes of your time to, to kind of chat with us. And Madam Chair, thank <coughs> you for allowing this to kind of go forward. But at least I just want to just make sure before we get past that, that we didn't miss the mark of what that is and just want to make sure that the board knew kind of why those numbers were sent back to Mark to make some readjustments to kind of put those numbers in, but I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Tax Commissioner, no, we're not finished with okay. that. Okay. Uh, we had some conversation on Friday and you indicated that you would provide a detailed <coughs> description of some of those items. You know, I know you had a, you landed on a certain amount of money, but I wanted to see if we could attach it to some things that you were planning to, to purchase. I know you're working on your, your drive center uh, and leading the pack as the test uh, beta site, and I appreciate that. I'm so excited. So you said you would drill down and give me some specific numbers, so we could just attach it to the budget. What it would be used for? Uh, uh, I'll try to get you those numbers. Those people are in class right now. Mm -hmm. That we put together those numbers. Uh, we actually went to class um, today on on those things that I just mentioned to you. So I'll try to get those numbers. And the second thing I'd like to introduce is Sharon Jackson who's our new tag manager. Greetings. Greetings. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'll try to get you those numbers. We're, we're actually in class. You know, we're crunching for a, another big surprise. I'll just put it that way. Well, you uh, like surprises. We're in, we're, in the, surprise. we're in the hunt. Uh, matter of fact, I'll be in the field after this. I dressed up. Uh, we, we found some other revenue that I think you will be completely surprised on. And I think it will be a, uh, uh, let's just put it this way, you will be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Thank so you. We're, we're constantly digging. So. <clears throat> okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you have yeah. come in. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. Two things. One, um, the, the, the public hearing, uh, we, we as district commissioners know that we, you know, we represent the public. You, we all had our coffee and conversation, different meeting, and getting input from our citizens on what the priorities were. Um, obviously, um, over the next two meetings, Jennifer, a public hearing and then an adoption meeting, um, we'll finalize that process as we've always done. And to that point, the adjustments that we're talking about, and this is just for the public record, if you think about it, and this is important, our, our municipal advisors made this comment often that uh, the county operates on what, 5% um, of our wall budget, basically a nickel. The comments we're talking about is pretty much a penny of that nickel. We as the board of commissioners are smoothing out. In other words, Madam Chair has pretty much delivered a balanced budget, you know, 95%, and we're just sort of smoothing out the edges, and it's just, okay, let's, let's, let's smooth this out. So we're not talking about much, but I, I, I just wanted to make that, that comment, but I do want to acknowledge something, that as a constitutional <laughs> officer, I'm cautious about commentary that, like, you got to prove a comments about revenue. I'm going to give you a case in point. The sheriff recognizes that he, he can, you know, fines and fees, and he can go make a lot of money for us just by rounding up people, right, and filling up that deal. And so when I, when I listen to, like, this commentary, I'm like, okay, one's not related to the other. Your job is to collect, but you don't have to prove that through a narrative that said, okay, you have to justify it. Because then now we're going, ooh, you, you're going to move hard on citizens just because you're trying to make a number. Now, it's not about you. This is me talking ideologically. <coughs> Please, it's not you. I, I, I get cautious. I heard your comments just as is. is that, okay, he needs more money, and I can weigh it on the merits just of that. But it doesn't have to be, okay, I, I, you're incending us. Okay, you're going to overpromise that. I'm going to go, like, no, I don't, you don't ever want to get in that place. Because I, I think you're constitutional. <coughs> That's the whole point. And our, our job is to sit there and to provide out of this ten dollars worth of need and one dollar to try to figure out how we do this, but but don't over put yourself in a place that like, no, and that, that goes for all constitutional officers. Don't put yourself in that place. We know what our job is and we shouldn't have to put y'all through that. When I even listen to the department heads, to your point, who really pushed stuff through. There's no performance evaluation, no nothing, but yet we got constitutional officers jumping through hoops like, why are we doing all this? I mean, I, but I appreciate your, your comments and why you, you, you came here to, to make your plea. Um, I, I heard you. I, I think I agree with Madam Chair just for the, more of the need um, <coughs> documentation on that, but to try to um, tie revenue that you, because I did this, you, sh you should do that. It's like they're not related uh, it, because you're constitutional. And I just so. want to uh, leave it at that. I mean, we have to make our call up or down based on just that. Now, and the reason I say that is that I heard a comment about 96 versus 97. I've heard Madam Guider talk in times past with, with the historical topping out of collection rate. I'm like, I don't care what you promise. We're not going to put a commitment beyond 96. Jennifer, don't put that budget beyond a 96 per collection rate because you're putting yourself in a place of having to just be an excellent, just that, that's too much. And so while you can commit to saying I'm going to collect 97, I wouldn't support anything that would put our budget expenses beyond 96% collection rate. And you're putting yourself in a real awkward place. Um, that's just me to you. I get to you know, say what I'm going to say. Uh, I, I want you to be careful, though, in, in your commentary. Um, and so I'll just yield it at that. I'm good, Chair. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank for you. hearing me. Thank you, <coughs> Tax Commissioner Baker. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you, sir. Okay, tab number six. Which we will move to our business items. Authorization to approve a contract with Ashley Rogers for the assistant juvenile public defender position and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Good oh, morning. Judge Harrison. I'm not Miss Gordon. Yeah, not Judge Gordon. Harrison. Judge I'm Michelle sure I'm Harrison. I'm feeling a little under the weather, and also we have a state conference we have to get to, so I figured instead of growing her for the first time up here, I would um, quickly come Thank to you. this. Um, as you guys may recall, we had moved some of our um, budgeted money to be able to create an assistant public defender to help assist um, our new juvenile public defender, Ms. Gordon. Um, and we, this person, uh, after taking some time to narrow it down, is Ashley Rogers. Um, and we are just asking that y'all approve her <coughs> contract uh, for the remainder of the year. And that's essentially it. I don't know if y'all have any questions. Okay. Any questions from the board? 
Thank you so much, Judge. I do. Okay. Nice one one comment us. related, we're, since we're talking about budgets, and this was related to a previous question, Jennifer, um, th there is um, on my list um, a public defender for the accountability of courts. Is that correct? And that is in the public defender's office. It is in the public defender's office. But the adult. Side. But the adult side. Yes. I'm just separating the two to, to make sure they didn't get it accelerated and get met. Okay. Yes. I'm good. All right. Two separate things. I got you. I've got that on my list for advocacy. I'm good now, Chair. Thank you, I'm Judge Harrison. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good holiday season. You Thank too. You, Happy holidays as well. Right. Tab number seven, authorization to approve a contract with Tidbit LLC for the Family Journal FEJ program at a total cost of $12,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Jennifer King. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this program is an e-journaling program that will work with our families um, involved in the family drug court as well as shins and delinquency side of court to promote better communication um, with the children and their, their parents and any other extended family members um, through the technological age. Um, so this is the contract with the provider um, who will be providing these services. Any questions for Mrs. King? All right, thank you. Pretty stuff explanation. Thank you. Tab number eight, authorization to accept a two-year grant from the National Quality Improvement Center of Collaborative Community Court Teams in conjunction with the Georgia Administrative Office of the Court to provide a cell phone for the Safe Care Coordinator for the Baby Steps Recovery Program and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all the <laughs> documents. Ms. King again. Yes, I'm filling in for Ms. Howard. Um, mm -hmm. This is to authorize the money to come from the AOC through the juvenile court to fund the cell phone for Ms. Howard for the um, our Baby Steps Recovery Program. Any questions from the board? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's yes, pretty self-explanatory. Staff number nine, authorization to apply for right-of-way easement for the construction of power pole for the fire station number three, Kil located on Kilroy Lane. Renovations and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Captain Pablo Luga. Good morning. Uh, as you know, we have started renovations on Station 3 on Kilroy Lane. Mm -hmm. There's a power pole about 15 feet uh, southwest of the building. It has to be moved south about 20 feet towards the rear driveway. That's what we need. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Tab number 10, authorization to submit the 2019 LMIG application with the approval road resurfacing list to GDOT and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> good morning, Madam Chair. And good morning. Good morning. Uh, this uh, would be authorizing us to uh, submit the list that's been circulated amongst the commissioners. Uh, to GDOT, we have to have that application to them before the end of the year in order to qualify for that grant. Uh, this year it's gonna be in excess, a little over $1.3 million. Uh, so we have to <coughs> have the board approval and, and the documents to the DOT within the next few weeks. Okay, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson has a comment. Yeah, question. all right, so 1.3 million, right? So just a little bit over that. Um, and I'm, I'm just framing it with the SPLOS that we, we do three million, right? Roughly per, per year. All right, so I mean, the importance of that SPLOS um, and, 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 and how we're able to at least try to begin to catch up on roads that we know uh, are, are, are that have deteriorated and aged over time. Um, so I just want to put that in context that that SPLOS in comparison that we only can do a little bit out of the LMIG. Not to dismiss it, but that SPLOS is, is very important. So I appreciate the public on that. To that point, being specific to District 2, uh, specific to our list, uh, Lee Road um, um, resurfacing. Uh, and just for the record, Miguel, we've had this conversation, but I just want you to say it, that uh, it is part of the 2019 resurfacing approach. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, what, what we're doing this year, different from prior years, is we are bidding out together the LMIG component of res resurfacing and the SPLOS. So it's going to be one contract. Okay. Now, because we're doing that, the local match that has to be a minimum of 30% above the grant level uh, is going to be done uh, uh, 
as part of this plot. And so <coughs> when we submit the list to, to GDOT, it will have the LMIG roads and it will also show Lee Road, which is part of this plot, to be the local match. And the reason for that is Lee Road itself uh, will cover the 30% match. Now, we could have submitted both the Elmi and the SPLOS list to GDOT uh, to confirm that we're spending over 30% of both the grant, but there was no need to do that because Lee Road alone will cover the 30%. Okay, and Lee, Lee, Lee Road um, um, is estimated being what, 500, 600,000? Uh, the, the estimate is 627,000 and some change. All right, 627, and that's two and a half miles, roughly? That is correct, and, and, and this is going to be resurfacing, <coughs> not to be confused with the widening project. Correct. It will cover the same area, uh, but but the concept here is that the resurfacing, it, the road will be milled and resurfaced, so that the final elevation will be at the same grade, approximately as it is now, so that when the widening project moves forward, it will not have to, we will not have to adjust the plans. Everything will match uh, as it is. Okay. And, and the reason I bring that up is when citizens have waited patiently for Lee Road, mm -hmm. uh, at, you know, widening to occur um, ever since the bridge was built right when I came in office back in 09, right? So it's been almost 10 years that we've been waiting on this. And, and obviously we had to go through a recession and, 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 you know, okay, we understand the past. But we got to a place where now the costs have gone up, inflation and stuff. Uh, we don't have as much money as we thought we had in our little capital transportation fund. So it's a reset. So the citizens like, okay, I mean, you, you, I mean Fairburn Road has been done, Riverside has been done. Um, I mean, Veterans is being done now to a certain extent, um, um, obviously. And so there was a concern, well, what about Lee Road, which has, what, about 25, 30,000 um, car trips cut through? The road is just, it's really deteriorated. And so, uh, in talking to my citizens, they were comfortable uh, with going ahead and resurfacing to show some progress, recognizing that the edges of this will have to go away once we get to widening. But it's like, okay, we can't wait another five to six years. My citizens should not have to wait 10 years, not while I'm in office, for us to be able to resurface the road. So, is that accurate? We'll lose some of the edges? I just want to put the record. That is correct. Okay, and my citizens are, are fully behind this decision to put Lee Road on this list. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, Miguel, I had to talk with Mark about Winona, um, Winona. Winona Street. Winona so. Street is on the SPLOS list. It will be bid together with this project, but it is on the list. Okay, because we were doing all the other roads that were leading yes. into it. Yes. Uh, when will we get the SPLOS list? Uh, you should have that already. Mm -hmm. I sent that out last week. We got it. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I can, I can resend I'm it to you. I'm down last week. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll resend it to you, but uh, you should have it. Yeah. Well, it, it'll probably be on my computer here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is tab number 11. Uh, authorization to advertise for bids for the Whitestone uh, Boulevard culvert. Uh, replacement project, and this has been one that's a long time coming. I know Commissioner Guy is real excited about this one for District 4. Yes, and we had some conversations with um, our county administrator and Commissioner Guider about uh, maybe three weeks ago in her office and tried to see what we could do to expedite this. And I really want to commend our transportation committee uh, for uh, putting a microscope on this particular project because it's been on the books. How long has it been on the books, Commissioner Guider? Since 2009, really. Well, we don't need to talk uh, about The bridge that. was washed out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we're going to move this project forward. Um, yes, Miguel, uh, uh, you covered it pretty well. With, I did? Uh, okay. and essentially, what uh, we're asking for permission to advertise the project. Uh, uh, as soon as we have that in place, the documents are pretty far along, we'll be ready to advertise. One of the things that, uh, that we are considering is uh, we're a little concerned about advertising over the holiday period and perhaps deferring until uh, <laughs> January uh, so that uh, what happens is that some of the contractors take off, you know, a week or a couple weeks during the winter and they may not see it. And we want to make sure that when, when we advertise, we get bids, we get competitive bids. Okay, I guess we can take that right, Commissioner. 
she want it now. <laughs> but but we, we understand. Any other comment from the board commissioners? Uh, Vice Chairman. Yeah, well, related in prior question when you talked about contracts, um, Director Valentin. Um, one of the things that we've always, I won't say always, one of the things that we've noticed over recent years that it was always this delay of contractors being able to deliver for us. And they get here to this, this time of year, and it's wet, it's cold, it's whatever. We've got two contracts, the LMIG, and we've got, obviously, the SPLOS. So my question is now that you're consolidating the, these contracts, and now it's going to be one player, um, I, I hope that we, they don't like, well, we can't get to you until later in the year. I, I have a problem with that that says, well, don't give me my hand. We want to start this as soon as the spring starts. We want to realize that while people can get out there and appreciate it, not be frozen when they finally can get out on this newly surfaced road. How, what, what's your take on that? Well, I fully agree. Uh, one of the things that we're doing different this time around is by, by bidding both projects together yep. and by setting the list that, uh, actually before the, the year, the 2019 fiscal year, we are in position to bid this work out early in the spring and have the work start much earlier in the year so that they can complete it all. Okay. Just Madam Chair, my, my, my concern is that again, it's just always, it seems like we do this every year. We, we do this list thing and then it's usually around July. And so we're just now bidding out the contracts and then obviously by the time they get on board and now they got to rush to meet our expectation. Where are they going to start on the west or the east or north or south? And, yeah. I just hope we can do better with the process. That's all. Yeah, and, and part of that, Commissioner, has been that that we have to have the list for LMIG before the end of the year, but we have been working on the SPLOSS list into the fiscal year, and that's why it got delayed into the summer or the fall before it got going. Uh, this time around, we have both lists ahead of time, so we can bid them together, get the project going in the spring, and they have all summer into the fall to complete. To complete. Okay. Okay, okay Commissioner Guido. Yes, on that note, <laughs> um, the list that has not been completed for 2018, um, will they be the first roads to be paved after the first year? Or when the weather breaks? Yes, they will, that could very well be a different, different contractor. It, it, if the same contractor gets the new contract, they will have to finish out what's uh, remaining from 2018 first. But if they, if it's not the same contract, then they could be going concurrently. <coughs> yeah. They mm -hmm. could. They could be working at the same time. First thing in oh. the spring, as, as soon as okay. weather breaks, Do you they know could what be percentage going. was not completed yet. On the SPLOSS side. I'm going to say about maybe 30, 35 percent is not complete. Okay, but LMIG? LMIG is a little more than that. It's probably about 50 percent, maybe a little more than that. So we got still got a ways to go. Yes, we do, but but the LMIG is going to be done in house. So so essentially, there could be two different contractors working on what the projects that were bid out, plus the in house staff is going to be paving what's remaining from this year. But the, the temperature spring. has to be what before? 50 we degrees and rising is the target. For how many days? <laughs> Three days or so? Just just uh, that particular day, as long as it's 50 degrees and rising, you can pay. So we might be paving some in December? <coughs> yeah, if the weather goes up, possibly. But uh, how long after a rain do we have to wait? As long as, as the ground is not too wet, uh, we pave in the rain as long as it's not very heavy rain because the asphalt goes down very hot, over 300 degrees. And so a, a little uh, moisture on the, on the surface doesn't hurt it too much as long as it's not pouring rain. So we could be paving today. <laughs> yes, we could be paving right now. <laughs> and in fact, they very well may, may be. Do you know if we are? <laughs> I haven't checked with them this morning. But I'm hearing from the people that thought their road was going to be paved and they said, wait a minute, you said it was going to be paved and it hadn't been paved yet, so uh, just wondered. Um, but um, we're going to let this bid out ASAP, right? Mm -hmm. And then they can start just as soon as the weather permits. That is correct. Right. I yield back. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item, which is uh, tab number 12, authorization to <coughs> approve a change in ar architectural and engineering fees to be paid to Carter Watkins Associate 
incorporation due to the increase in size and scope of the new Douglas County Senior Center in Lithia Springs. Director Peacock. Madam Chair, the Parks and Rec Committee yes. has asked for additional information. We're not ready to move forward at this time. So okay. we, we'll okay. remove this Perfect. item from the agenda. Okay, thank you. Tab number 13, authorization to award a contract to Intercontinental Commercial Services Incorporation for professional janitorial services for the Douglas County Courthouse for a total annual uh, cost of $63,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. This uh, item was bid out uh, on October the 23rd. We received six bids. Uh, Intercontinental Commercial Services is the low bid. We've checked their references. We believe they can perform the services that, that we need here in the courthouse. So we're asking that you uh, approve uh, the award of the contract to them. Okay, any questions from the board? Thank you so much. To, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just my, so, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Field, so, so are we saying that 63, because I kind of went back and did a couple of numbers with before our previous vendors. 63 are we are we confident i mean i i know we go for the lowest bid i get that mm -hmm. i understand that but is this a realistic bid bid i feel <laughs> this is a realistic <laughs> bid we believe so uh this company is a large multi-faceted company they do a lot of different services for both public and private uh, and their um, janitorial services is large well funded uh, and the references that we've uh, checked gave them very high marks. Understood. But based on my numbers, what I saw on previous contracts on this same uh, situation, the numbers were just way off to me. So, I, and I'm not saying they can't, but it just, are we setting ourselves up for um, uh, an increase just from the effect of, uh, what is it called? Well, you, you, you can't do it for that. You just, you just want the bid. No bid. Uh, um, and I get the lowest bid, but I just want to make sure that you're confident that you're recommending to us 63, the bidder at 63, that he or she or it can pull it off and not come back and ask for a rebid or, or an additional amount. Because we're probably talking about, and I don't want to get into the numbers, that's a, there's a substantial amount difference in that number versus what we did in previous time. That's all. But I cannot give you a 100% assurity that that's not going to happen, but we do not believe it's going to happen. And if if this company comes in and cannot perform, 30 days later they'll be gone. And then we'll be back in the same situation. Well, then, then what? Then we would go to the next lowest bidder and see if they would pick up the contract. Right. So if the numbers and I don't have them in front, the numbers serves me correct. There's like a 63, then a, a, a 62, 59, 63. Right. All right, so it's not, and 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 I understand the lowest bid. I'm not, I'm not trying to deny that, and not, I understand that's kind of the approach. But I just want to make sure that we understand that realistically, to me, the numbers doesn't add up to do, that you're able to pull this off. That's all. But uh, if if you're confident that that's what we got here, this is the best number. Not just it's the lowest bid, but it makes sense. When we sent the bid out, it was very specific as to what would be expected from the vendor. Bill, I understand. I, don't, try, you, don't try to sell. I, got, I hear you. I'm just saying there's a huge difference, disparity here in the numbers from what we had before. Uh, probably about 40 plus thousand dollars, 42. Yeah. CBM Atlanta is our current provider, and their bid uh, increased a little bit for this year to six thousand six hundred dollars. I missed it. So it's not forty something thousand dollars. Okay. It's it's less than it's around twelve thousand dollars. Okay, maybe I'm looking at something different, but okay. I, I just want to make sure that you're confident in what you're you're, you're sending out to us. So that's all. I'm yeah. confident. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Ladies first. I, I just, I just want to ask for Clarity. Um, on Albright down there, it's, it's less than the square foot of the one that won the bid on both in both of these columns. However, the monthly rate is higher. Why is that? Well, that? that's for carpet cleaning. That's not for, those are for alternative um, uh, cleaning services. That's not for the general cleaning. 
Those are alternates for carpet cleaning. So the court. 59, with the, the quote in the total cleaning square foot of courthouse, does that include the carpet cleaning? It does not. Okay. None of them do. None of them do. Those would be uh, extra cost if we asked them to do those things. And, and it would have been nice if we just had it extended to annual so we could look down there and look at instead of the per monthly. <laughs> I just reported it like they submitted it. So thank you for your. I like consistency. Got it. All right. <laughs> I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. I'm yeah. sorry about that. No, I, we're good. We're good. Um, is this something that I'm, I'm listening to Commissioner Mitchell? I'm, I'm listening to everybody's commentary. Do we need to pause on this? Um, I, again, we tend to look, look, yield to each other to do certain due diligence on certain things. Um, it just it, how it works. It's how the board commissions work. Not that we all don't get involved, but but I'm, I'm listening to something here, and it's like, okay, do I need to go? But it, it makes me think: Do we need to pause on this? It, to be comfortable, make sure that it's right. I don't like disparities. Um, I, 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 and again, all you have to do is just listen. And I'm listening to like, okay, so what's going on here? It's up to us to pause, to get a little bit more deeper into this, to make sure there's comfort. Don't be dealt, don't be dealt your hand. If you're uncomfortable, let's pause and get this right. Um, because we have to live with it if we accept it as is. So I'm okay with pausing. I'm, I'm good. Y'all know that Madam Chair, I will yield to you guys collect we just need to pause the meeting um, just to, to make sure you're comfortable I'm fine okay. we have to decide if you're ready to go and go but I'll leave it at that okay you yield back yeah we got to yield back before you find out before you find out I did I, I, I see so you did. Did. okay, okay. Uh, uh, the, 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 the question is uh, not who's low and who's high and when can we fire them. Do we have confidence in our system? Our process. <laughs> Do we have confidence in our process? Do we have confidence in the recommendations uh, of, of the process? Do we have confidence in, in uh, our uh, directors, purchasing directors, uh, oversight of the process? So uh, we have the opportunity to divest ourselves of this contract if these people don't perform. I'm in favor of going forward. You know, maybe the other people overcharge it. Could be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I yield back. Okay. Um, uh, Director Peacock, you said we have 30 days to get out of the contract if we if need be. Is that written? That's without cause. We, we, we have 30 days that we can right. leave the contract for any reason. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to tab number 14. Can I get. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd like to get a. You want a consensus? I'm just trying to hear the lean because again, if you bring something up, I take it serious. And, and as you say, it's not about the person; maybe it is the process. Um, uh, and it, this is almost like economic development that was mentioned earlier. The purchasing tends to move independently uh, of board and commissioners, and we have to reach like this in a moment. Whereas we got more insight along the way as it relates to um, other, other matters. So back to consistency. I, I mean, I'm just listening to y'all, and I'm just like, well. I mean, I'm okay, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm going to lean to y'all and make the call. I mean, if you guys want to pause, we pause. I hear a collective yield that you two want to at least move forward. But what do y'all want to do? Do you need to get more comfortable? Um, or do you want to just pull it? Director Peacock, we had conversations just briefly on Friday about this particular we did, uh, yes, contract. We did. And I, I mentioned the same thing as Commissioner uh, Mitchell. The board is a little low compared to what our, the previous numbers were in the past and certainly want to give you time to do the due diligence uh, thorough backgrounds to make sure because the price is a little low. We did talk about that so I don't want to just uh, omit that. Um, right now let's, if, if we could just take a moment, a pause and look at it and just make sure we're going to the right person or the right company because it is very low in comparison to what we've done in the past. And it's just very difficult to get someone started and they don't have enough money for cleaning supplies so on and so forth. I'm so here to do what the let's, board let's, let's, let's pause. Pause. Yeah. No, we're not rebidding. Just do, just do a little more de due diligence. I'm not saying that this company is not um, the right company. Okay. If you could just look at it just for me just a little bit. Absolutely. Because we did have conversations about it. That's okay. Okay. Next meeting. Okay. Next meeting. All right. Thank you. I'll take it. We'll take it this one too. Next meeting. 
next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, tab number 14, authorization to grant a right-of-way easement to Greystone Power to assess the new Boundary Waters Concession Building authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Good morning. Director Dukes, how are you? Good I'm good, thanks. Uh, you said it, it's uh, Grant Greystone Power, an easement, so they can supply power to the new uh, concession restroom at Boundary Waters, which is under construction. Okay, any comments on the board? Sounds, it's, it's uh, self-explanatory. Thank you so much, uh, Director Dukes. And uh, last but not least, is tab number 15, uh, County Administrator, are you going to take this one for us? Um, yes, Mayor. Matthew Crow had a meeting this afternoon. Uh, authorization to approve a car allowance agreement for Katrina Harden, Chief Assistant Solicitor, and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Um, she took, uh, I can't remember the guy's place, but she's a new employee. We've already approved her uh, contract. Um, this car allowance was, the previous employee had the same car allowance. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comments from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you. We'll move on to um, our discussion items is number 16. We have a board appointment to be discussed in our executive uh, session. County Attorney, do we need to go into executive session? All three. All three. All three. Yes, All three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion to accept. All in favor say aye. Aye. We'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll see you back at 12 noon on the dock. Let's go now. That's good. We're on. That's all good. Let me get this on. Oh, we're not going. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have any other questions or concerns regarding this uh, work session? Commissioner Guider? I just want to say that after the election, we should require that people remove their signs. You know, it's ridiculous that they just leave them out there. Okay. And uh, we used to, we had a sign ordinance. Yeah, a bond or something. Well, you had to put up a temporary bond, and then uh, once you removed all your signs, you got your check back or something. Okay. But... Uh, that these people are leaving these signs up forever and ever. I, you know, someone that ran against me that time, people were calling me saying, make him take his signs down, and I couldn't do that. But once the election's over, I think the signs ought to come down. Oh, I will uh, I'll talk to our code enforcement keep department to keep, see if we can Keep follow. Douglas County beautiful. I've already talked to them. You already, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, on, the, on, on that topic, uh, I, I agree. It seems like the ponders are some signs that I've seen or out-of-state candidates, mm -hmm. you know, they get them up for, you know, agriculture or whatever. And it seems like our local people do a lot better job of, uh, of getting them out. Although, although you do see a few, uh, you know, isol isolated cases like this. Strategies. But, uh, you know, I pull over and, just, and get them up myself. So I think some people could just uh, well, you can take, take initiative. Take yeah. <laughs> another, another thing I, want, I wanted to uh, bring up was I was driving up Chapel Hill Road and I saw the, uh, the new communication tower uh, going up. I hope that's what it was. But we have one behind the uh, Chapel Hill uh, fire station. Are <coughs> oh, they putting up a new tower? They put up a new tower there for something, and I don't remember uh, any. Uh, no, yeah, I think it may be. I'm not sure the exact locations. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, we I, can find out. I was cur curious about that. I didn't. I didn't know if I recall that it was going to be a digital site, digital radio site, but uh, it was a, a three-part, uh, a three-column or three-post uh, tower. Mm -hmm. It had guys up there on each one of them assembling, the, uh, assembling that tower about, I don't know, 150 feet off the ground. I was thinking to myself, what a great job. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> and that was Station 5, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right under the power lines? No, it's back behind. Right behind? Behind the fire station. But the power lines go there. Yeah, to the south. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. I was okay. curious about that. Mark, will you research it for mm -hmm. us? Okay. All right, anything else from the board? Yeah. With that being said, this meeting is adjourned. This work session is adjourned. <laughs>